So when I joined MEI in August 2008, uh, I attended to a Kaizen event. And I must confess that I was <laughs> not, very, not, not very well interested. <laughs> Because uh, manufacturing, uh, as I said, uh, they were doing Kaizen every week, uh, almost close to our engineering uh, locations. But none of us were <laughs> attended because we thought it was manufacturing, never applied to us. So um, I really wonder how it could be applied to, uh, to my engineering purposes. And I discussed this with my newer manager, who uh, I, will al I will always remember, say, at least, because uh, you will learn what your department is doing because I knew nothing, and so it was completely new for, for me. So we did a Kaizen Weeks, and after one week, uh, we defined almost the value stream. Uh, that is to say, 65 big steps, uh, 88 actions to do, and a future 30% uh, lead time de uh, to decrease that we could achieve. Unfortunately, during that week, it was, uh, uh, we had not been able to uh, to finish the entire process because of its complexity. And just for example, the initial value streams for the measurement process, that is one of the big steps, was composed at, at, at initially of 12 steps. Now we have refined it into 70 steps, and we did for all going into more and more details. So at the end of the weeks, I had completely, really completely changed my mind, and I thought really the process mapping was just great. And uh, I, I got my new directions uh, for the departments, which is, uh, we can uh, say, the true north for the, C the CEO, but I'm not a CEO. <laughs> and the department should be more involved for uh, in, uh, in engineering and research activities to bring more value. And the build set release process was very long and should be completely automatic. But after the Kaizen event, I was really enthusiastic. Uh, I wanted to, to push my teams uh, for improvement. I really wanted to move to World Gamba, but how could I do it? Uh, I spent four to five hours uh, in communications, uh, planning, reporting with the sales, the marketing, the technical support, engineering, and, uh, and other engineering departments. Yeah. And I was really clearly part of the problems. It was myself. I didn't have any time. Because if you think, if you think ab uh, about, uh, about Lean's activity reporting, is, is clearly time consuming, clearly. And it may be necessary at some point, but it's still a waste, and, and it is a waste. So I investigated to find the root cause for uh, a PDCA approach, as uh, you've seen uh, many times today, uh, during these two days. And what I found that was that before 2008, the team was overwhelmed by the number of development uh, and, requ and requests, and, and so was unable to answer about timing, duration, uh, reason of the issue, and many other aspects. The communications with the project, project requesters was hard, and there were misunderstandings between uh, the, share, the stakeholders. And this resulted in perhaps a lack of trust uh, from the requester, and so they uh, insisted to have a regular report on their project that we are doing. Uh, moreover, priorities kept changing, uh, so added to the general confusion. We introduced uh, agility in, in 2011. Uh, we categorize the, the different type of development, so one color per type uh, to be more visual. As I said, you have a, uh, red, orange, yellow, and, uh, and greens. I'm not able to give you what they correspond to. Uh, but uh, they, dif they, they depends on the different types of uh, activities that we are doing regularly. This really helps us to show the status of all projects in development at a glance, and particularly to see the bottlenecks, as you can see here. <laughs> and because it's really uh, uh, data that were available in, in March or uh, April. And uh, so we can take the appropriate actions. And really here, transparency is really everything. It, it is not possible to, uh, to hide what is going wrong, uh, which is really an advantage when the value stream includes multi multiple teams in multiple uh, sites. Uh, when, what we, uh, one more point is when we introduced agility, we got one bonus. <laughs> Marketing people they really loved it, <laughs> which is uh, to, be, uh, to be said because it's not happened very often. And the visual board saved them a half day 
of work to build their own report that they were doing every two weeks, which saved them 12 days per, per year, which was a good improvement for them as well. <laughs> so the questions today is, after all this improvement, was what is the, uh, what is the result and how, is, uh, how has my role changed? Well, instead of uh, four to five hours spent uh, weekly on reporting purposes, uh, I only spend now five hours per week. And now the, tr the trust came back and we removed really the waste. Once we agree, uh, the, uh, once we agree the release date, people stop requesting uh, status reports, which really helps. And finally, I have much more time to spend at Gemba. Uh, and help my teams to fix their issue and be ready when a crisis comes. So to take up an image from, the, from Michael Bally's book, The Gold Mine, that you, <laughs> you, you all know, my role has, has more become a captain of a, a board, uh, a, a boat, sorry. When, when, when the sea is calm, uh, everyone knows what to do, so I have nothing to care. They, they just uh, do themselves and I'm redundant, really. And when a storm arises, I can fully work on it because uh, I, I know that it won't affect the rest of our current activities, so I can really deal with the crisis. But how do we deal with transparency? I have to say that uh, these questions really bothers, bothered me a lot and for a long time. Uh, because transparency is really, really cra uh, scary, sorry. I say it's crazy, but especially at the beginning, because it highlights where the problems are and how we are inefficient. And we were, yeah, we were in, in some, some way inefficient. So in a house questionings, everyone could say, why, do we, why did you do that? Why don't we do that? And it shows the bottlenecks in the process. And some people, they can really uh, feel this as a personal attack. However, the good news is that transparency builds trust. Uh, transparency allows to change priorities easily. And every channel, uh, divisions in my company, is aware of that, of what the other groups requested. And uh, a compromise can finally emerge. And transparency shows the bottlenecks, but a result uh, may lead to resource leveling and stop endless di discussions on who is to blame because the project is, is too late. Making people change their, their habits is never easy, as you have uh, listened here. The more experienced the people are, the more the number of methodology they, they experimented, and not always for the best. So we started with li little changes, changes that are visible, like the five S rules that you may know. Uh, everything has one place, one place for everything. And so you have examples of uh, what products are very well aligned with all their names and so forth. And uh, you also have uh, a green, uh, they have color, they, it's, it just happened this year, so because they were uh, another issue, so they try to put colors to, uh, to, uh, to sort the, 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 the units by type, so with the red LED and the green LED, which is a very good point at the, <laughs> this time. And we also focus on one of the most annoying issue, doing that it will take time to be, to be solved, because the, the most annoying issue was the relocation of our lab that was not very well uh, Placed, and it took indeed 1.5 years to, uh, to to convince everyone, everyone, especially the management teams, and to have a proper budget. To uh, but at, at the end we moved, and after a few months, every teams, mechanical support teams, uh, software, and so forth, really enjoy their new new workplace. And I also wanted just to show you that at the beginning, as uh, 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 Mr. Takashi uh, knew, at the beginning we had only. Uh, a board, because <laughs> we, we started with a board be, before moving to uh, uh, software tools. We also focus on security and ergonomics. We firstly designed a new mobile testing table in 2009 and improved the version in 2010 to remove the noise as well. And moving, te because moving test is much easier now, uh, test equipment. And the very good thing of all of this is that both tables have been uh, designed and realized by one member of the team, exploiting its personal skills in mechanics uh, that is doing outside of, uh, of the work. And, and that's really pe what people like. They like doing their, what their, their hobby at work. So how the, how the team felt regarding improvement? So in 2008, they were skeptical, really, as I was myself. 
I had to push to have the improvement done. And new improvement really came from me, which did not appeal at that time. I was really too enthusiastic to, uh, to make them change to really, and to really see what I needed to, be, to do. Hopefully, from readings, discussions, and participation in this kind of conference, I started to think that I needed to change my practice and so to become more a coach to exploit their ideas rather than mine. So the change was really subtle and not easy to do it, especially for myself. But I was really happy, very, very happy and relieved when in 2012, the, the, the most of the ideas came from my teams and not from myself. No, my problem is, is really how to prioritize their ideas because there are so many, and be, which is a very good thing and everybody would like to have this. And to, uh, to make them, so to make them uh, this happens, I can only recommend you to, uh, to be as more listening as possible with your teams. Because for example, one of my teams uh, came, had an idea about restructuration of the file hierarchy and I was really running into a big crisis and I almost say later. But you never know when the idea will come back and if it will have uh, uh, the courage to come to you. So I just say, okay, I stop. I, I listen for five minute, 15 minutes and still we are still implementing these new ideas today uh, with great improvement. So an important question that I, I had unfortunately to, to ask myself was how to deal with people that are reluctant to change and so to lean. For, for, for a first Kaizen uh, in the beginning of a lean journey, we always have three types of populations. Uh, the positives, that represent almost 10%, the negative, 10%, and 10% that have no opinion, and they just, uh, they, they don't know if they will embrace or not uh, the, uh, the new methodology. So my recommendations will be to push the positive thinking attitude, uh, but without stopping the negatives, because, uh, to talk, because they really bring uh, ideas and concerns that are very useful to design your new process. And so the good thing is that the, the no opinion people, they will follow the positives. And, but some people are, are negatives and that will never change. But some who were always frustrated before, uh, before because their ideas were not promoted became really leaders in my teams and in launching new improvements and ideas. So back to a more optimistic views. So this is how we were today, uh, how it was in 2009 when we started. And how is the teams today? So today we changed a lot of the positions. And uh, so we decrease the operators, but we increase logistics. We de decrease technicians. But the fact is we changed the positions into, uh, we, we didn't fire anyone. <laughs> uh, well, which we, now we have uh, 1.5 software engineers and we have one research people within the teams, which really develop now our, our activ research activities. And we really, uh, not only we, we are able to, to deal with the growth, but we also uh, added much more value to, uh, to the company. So uh, following Google's presentation last year in the summit, we recorded the times we spent in improvement and I was very happy to discover that we are spending 15 to 20% of anyone's time in my teams in training and improvement, and, and also others. But improvement really happens only if you, if you let them, uh, if you allocate the times to happen. Otherwise, it can never happen. And everyone in the team seems happier. We have more and more, I, I, I say seems because I, I, can, I cannot know. They have more and more ideas to improve their current activities because they really see now the waste today. They know that it's, it's really part of their job's definitions to remove the waste. And it's good as for them as for MEI, because waste removals allows them to work on more interesting activities that bring more value added to MEI and, and our customer. And it's really a win-win-win strategy. And so what I've been, just to show you some results, what we have been our major achievement during for these four years, four years so firstly, in 2009, we reduced the lead time not only by 30% as planned, but by 42%. In 2010, because we, are new, we hire new people, free, we needed to train, so the productivity was not as, as good as before. So we work on productivity and increase the productivity by 30%. In, in uh, 2011, we reduced the variance by 75%. And this year, we reduced the release process time by 90, 97%. And, okay, this were our, <laughs> our problem, but how 
did we double the output? And, and so if in 2008, we were able, uh, we were releasing a bit more than 200 uh, release. At the end of 2012, we are now at 1,000, which we, we, we will reach, you know, we will reach the 1,000 today. And we, we are providing five, five times more software uh, than in 2008, and also our costs are decreased very significantly compared to 2007. So we really have done, I think, a, a lot, and it was, for me, very, very exciting. <laughs> and uh, so I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.